Welcome back. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it ain't. This is not a podcast. It's just my thoughts with Ron Markman. Um, Drake is back. After the battle with Kendrick Lamar, Drake just dropped a new song with Sexy Red off of her new album. The song is called You My Everything. And, you know, the headline here is Drake is rapping over the BBL Drizzy sample. The song is is produced by Tay Keith, and then Drake starts rapping, and then he says something about BBLs, and then there's a beat switch, and you get the BBL Drizzy sample. Um, <clears throat> Look, and a lot of people have a bunch of just things to say about it, right? Here's what it is, man. Eventually, Drake was going to have to get back to being Drake, just like eventually Kendrick is going to have to get back to being Kendrick, you know, getting on with the mission, getting on with whatever their purpose is, because, you know... um. Kendrick's sole purpose, right, is not to be Drake's adversary. Though him going against Drake kind of aligns with Kendrick's vision of, of how culture needs to be upheld and et cetera. But that's a whole deeper combo. Like, like very point blank period is after the battle, these guys had to get back and get back on with their careers, right? Now, I absolutely believe there will still be shots thrown back and forth. I said this before, like, None of these battles come like to a screeching halt, to a complete stop. I think Kendrick, I think Drake actually will still have smoke. He'll still have like bars kind of alluding or, or like taking shots at, at Kendrick, but nothing that's going to explode into like a full blown beef. Like I said, we, we, we seen it. It's over with. It's done. Drake lost, but you know, he still has to go on. And be Drake. I think the bigger loss is if he goes and then his career gets derailed. Like, you know, he's still Drake at the end of the day. Um, so he still has to be Drake, right? Part of being Drake is dropping features, is being omnipresent. You know, that that's part of Drake's mission. I think Drake very much wants to, you know, since 2009, since so far gone, we haven't been without Drake. Um, I think he just wants to be present at all times. He wants to be the guy at all times. There were other features lined up. There was a Camila Cabello um song that had a drake feature on it that was lined up to schedule to drop like right in the middle of that beef it was pre-planned and then the beef happened and and that didn't seem like such a good idea anymore um bfb the pac-man also maybe had a feature that that got pulled i believe he did um but i i hadn't heard it i hadn't heard like confirmation from it like there's a world where that could have been the troll. I don't believe so. I, I believe BFB the Pac-Man also had a Drake feature. Like, I do absolutely believe that, but I just can't confirm that. But what, what I'm saying is that there were Drake features that were lined up during this battle that had to get pushed back. And it makes sense that, you know, um, it was interesting that Sexy Red is, is the first um, Drake feature. Especially after the line where Kendrick said when, when he sees the two of them together, he sees two bad bitches. Um... You know, but again, if, if if I'm Drake and I genuinely fuck with Sexy Red, like I genuinely just like what she's on. Obviously, they've been on tour. They seem to be friends. They, they you know, Rich Baby Daddy, they have collaborations. Um, you can't let this battle take you out your zone. So, so if Kendrick says, when I see Drake and Sexy Red, I see two bad bitches. Does that mean you don't work with Sexy anymore? If you don't, that means Kendrick, I mean, Kendrick won, but that, that also means, damn, he really kind of took you off your square like what do you really want to do i think drake really wants to make a record with sexy red and he did it um you know and remember you know and i said this before when it comes to like the extreme fans right the everything my favorite artist does is great they could do no wrong like we can't really trust those opinions i hear y'all but i i can't really take that all the way into account like some folks are already saying this drake feature is extremely corny um, the fact of the matter is you probably didn't like Drake anyway, anything he dropped, like you wasn't really going, going to be in tune with it. And then there's some people on the other side saying, look at my guy over there. He's rapping over the ops beat. This is why he's the greatest. He took Metro's BBL Drizzy and he rapped over it and made it into a hit song. And that's why he's the greatest. And that's the other side of it too. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's just, uh, uh there's just Drake being Drake. Right. Um, the truth is, the, the feature is fine. It's a fun song. It's Drake doing what Drake does best. It's you know making moments that makes everyone. Now, now the key about this, whether you love them or you hate them, no matter which side you stand on, or if you're in the middle, you're gonna stop and listen, and you're gonna have an opinion. And, and you know that's what Drake does. Um, I don't know if he does that the best, but but that's one of the things that Drake does like really extremely fucking well is creating moments to make people stop listening. He did what? 
Word? Okay, I got to check this out. So as far as the sample goes, right, just for, for those who don't know, let's recap. The original BBL Drizzy sample was made by King Wallonius um, on social media. Um, it was an AI generated track. It was after Rick Ross started teasing Drake after Champagne Moments when, when he talked about him, you know, having the plastic surgery. And then he got on social media, started teasing him, calling him hashtag BBL Drizzy on social media. So right after that, King Wallonius did like this AI generated track of like a 60s style soul record, right? It's the type of record that, you know, if you're a rap producer that you would dig back into the crates and sample, maybe like a, a Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, um, something and sample that and flipping and update it. So he did it kind of like in that older 60s, 70s style um, soul record, BBL Drizzy, the lyrics are funny. The sample was then of course flipped by Metro Boomin who really like this whole thing started with, with Metro and Future. Um, but the sample was flipped by Metro Boomin, who issued a challenge to up and coming rappers to drop their verses on the song. Um, and whoever had the best verse would get $10,000 and a free beat. So then we had a bunch of BBL Drizzy um, records and verses and stuff come out. I don't know who won that challenge. I got to see if he actually made, made good on that promise. And then um metro played the the his beat at, at a baseball game so you know that's been going viral my favorite one has been the the um the bachata version of, of um or the merengue version sorry of um bbl drizzy um it was pretty funny um but as far as clearing the sample from metro it's unclear whether or not sexy had to and i, I don't think she had to for one and shout out to take keith take keith produce you my everything for one though i believe that since the original bbl drizzy was an ai generated track by like an ai music tool i believe it's public domain so metro definitely doesn't own the sample i don't even know that king wallonius owns the sample but if anybody if it had to get cleared through anybody it would be king wallonius and then why wouldn't he sample it but i i, I don't i think because of the nature in which it was made i think it's public domain so that means that any producer can flip it similar to how Metro did and just do, don't have to clear it. And again, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. This is just my best guess. I'll look more into it. Um, but shout out to Tay Keith who, who at least at the moment of the video, he's the only credited producer. If you look on Spotify, but, but these can be updated at any moment, right? Um, Drake doesn't even have a writing credit. If you look on Spotify at the time when I'm making this video, that just tells me that, you know, this will be up, like, that'll be updated. The credits will be updated. Um, we just, I'm not going to get into the whole lyrics. This don't need a whole lyric breakdown, but some interesting lyrics on here. Um, you know, Drake says, give me the pussy. I'm bullying the shit hit from the back and I'm pulling your shit. I had some smoke in the city. I wanted to see you, but baby, I couldn't just dip. As soon as this shit gets resolved, I'll turn librarian for you. I'm booking that shit. Um, it's just, it's interesting that this is all about like a relationship record and he's kind of talking directly to sexy but still references. I had some smoke in the city. I wanted to see you, but baby, I couldn't just dip. That of course is a reference to the shooting at Drake's Toronto crib on May 7th, um, where his security guard was shot and sent to the hospital. So that's a very real thing outside of this whole thing with him and, and Kendrick. That was a very real thing. I, I never thought that was Kendrick related. I still don't think that's Kendrick related. I think that's some inner Toronto thing. I won't get too much into it. Cause that's really like, that's some street shit with some real implications. I'm not going to sit up here and play detective for it. Um, you know, I, I think people could, could connect the dots and start making their own assumptions, but um, we really don't know. I don't think that's a reference to the beef, though, but it's some real shit. When Drake says, I had smoke in the city, I wanted to see you, but baby, I couldn't just dip. It's like, yeah, there was a shooting at my house and my security guard was shot. Like, nah, okay, we're going to take this seriously. So, you know, again, Drake is making a fun song, but still putting his life into it, the seriousness of what the situation was. Um, but nothing, you know, that those are no shots. These are just the reality of what it is. Um, and then he has a, a, another lyric where he's talking to Sexy about, you know, trying to get her to, to, she's from St. Louis, so trying to get her to come. Hey, let's let's do a getaway. Let's just get away. Let's, let's. So he says, showed enough love to the city, I promise. So let's get the fuck out of St. Louis. Maybe we go to St. Lucia. I've been there. I'll, in, I'll introduce you. Or maybe we go to St. Martin. Or maybe you go to St. Martin with me if these take a break and quit starting with me. Maybe you'll go to St. Martin with me if these take a break and quit starting with me. 
Now, that's a reference to the beef, right? But it's not even just Kendrick directly. Remember, Metro and Future drop, we don't trust you, and they drop, we still don't trust you. So that's shots from both of them, shots from Metro and Future, plus Kendrick on like that. Um, shots from The weekend. shots from ASAP Rocky, Rick Ross dropped the diss track. So again, this is, this is almost like that 20v1. Like, he's not addressing simply just Kendrick. He, but, and again, it's just the reality. It's not even a shot. Drake is just 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 painting the picture, um, you know, or maybe you go to St. Martin with me if these take a break and quit starting with me. Again, he's painting himself. Like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. You guys just all ganged up on me. That's that's the Drake perspective. And and, and it's funny, he did that in a very slick way on um on um for free, the DJ Khaled record. Last year I had drama girl, not right now. We know I've talked before about what that's a double entendre for. Shout out to my man DJ Drama. That's a slick line. But last year I had Drama Girl, not right now, um, referencing the Meek situation. You know, so Drake has done that he, even on Work, um, which came out after the Meek thing. He had the lyric on Work with Rihanna. I got is trying to end me. Sorry if I'm way less friendly. Like again, that was in reference to after the Meek Mill battle. So. Like this is a very, if you kind of look and draw the dots, there's a very Drake thing to do after a beef. He'll he'll get into maybe a more lighthearted record, and he'll reference the drama. He'll reference what we all saw and, and know to be true. It's not even a shot, but he's saying, "Hey man, I, there's drama. Um, maybe we'll go to St. Martin if they take a break and quit starting with me." Um, you know, don't reference. Like it, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? He's like real nonchalant about it. There's not medicine. It's a very Drake thing to do. Um, and then he has, um, and this is where the beat changed. So that's the take Keith beat. And then he says, um, why you love me? Still a mystery. Me and the surgeon got history. I changed a lot of girl lives for real. They need a new body. They hitting me. BBL Drizzy. They want a new body. They asked me for it. That's when the beat changed, right? When he talks about BBL Drizzy, BBL Drizzy. They want a new body. They asked me for it. The last one junk. He did it for free. Cause I sent so many past ones for him, but red don't even worry about that shit. So and then he switches to the BBL Jersey beat. I look, I think it's clever. I think it's a fun way to 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 get back to it. It's not the illest thing I ever heard, but yeah, it's Drake acknowledging everything that happens and, and saying, Hey, all right, cool. Like y'all was all entertained, y'all all, all see, seen it. But at least from his perspective, I'm I'm gonna get back to being Drake. I'm gonna do what I do best. Um Jung, for those who don't know, is a reference to Dr. Calvin Jung. Um, AKA Dr. Jung Money out of Houston. Um, Drake shouted him out before on You Broke My Heart and Daylight from For All the Dogs album. Um, Drake also bought him, like, there's a video of Drake hit, bringing him um, Jung Money scrubs. Like, with, I guess it's funny. And dude is a huge Drake fan. Drake has a mural in his office. So, you know, I think for all the criticism that Drake received about who he is, his character. Um, you know, we don't like the women you fucking like, like, like all of this, like he's not shying away from that. And I'm not talking about the young girl allegations, but, um, you know, because again, though, to me, that was just rap. I, I always said, I need to see proof of that. But Drake is the guy that, that will fly you out. Like, like these are not like meaningful relationships. Like he'll fly you out. Like, He'll get you a body, a new body, like it's nothing. He'll pay for the BBL, you know. Um, I, you know, I pay the big, the bigger. I won't pay for no reduction. Like this is just who he is, his character. So like this record is just setting him up, getting back to who he is. Like it's really him telling us, yo, I'm not really sweating that battle. And I think really, I think he is stressed. I think, I think, I think this took a great toll of stress on him. Why, how wouldn't it? But what what he's presenting to us is like, hey man, at the end of the day, I'm still Drake. I'm back to be a Drake. Nobody's gonna take me off my square. I think that's what this song is. Um, and like I said, at, at the end of this, both of them got to go back to being who they are. Um, Kendrick seemingly has the song of the summer, definitely a song of the summer contender. We'll see what else comes out, but with not like us, um, you know, Kendrick. Technically, like it feels like because the song now is everybody's outside, it feels like Kendrick's outside, but Kendrick isn't really outside either. Like, we haven't seen him, you know what I'm saying? I seen Simba perform the song, I seen Isaiah Rashad dancing to the song 
on tour. Like we it, throughout this all, we haven't seen Kendrick. So at the end of the day, even though it feels like Kendrick is super present right now, I don't think they switch places. Like Kendrick isn't like outside. Kendrick is just being Kendrick. So it just goes to my point that the battle is done. There'll be some more shots back and forth for sure. There'll be light. Um, you know, it's kind of like the wrap up. It's like the post game, but both of these guys are going to go back to being who they are eventually. And, and I think we're starting to see the, the, the start of that. Um, and that's it, man. So yeah, I just wanted to talk to, to y'all about this BBL jersey. I know it's driving you know, everybody crazy. Cole got a new record too with, uh, with Cash Cobain, the, the grippy record, um, uh, Rolling Stone. I, I got to read this. They, they had a, a funny, a funny, um, headline. Um, Rolling Stone said, um, oh man, J. Cole dodges beef, chooses cheeks on Cash Cobain's grippy. Um, so, and, and that was written by, um, man, cap, man, cap. I'm sorry if I, and enough respect. I know your work. Um, man, cap Conte. I, I probably butchered your name. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but but I do have a lot of respect. I do read a lot of your work. That I was actually referenced um, in the piece as well. But so, you know, Cole is back, you know, and working with Cash Cobain. So, again, I think the beef is, is over. I think we'll, we'll still hit shots back and forth. I think Cole will drop a song, um, you know, talking about his perspective, and, and we'll break that down when that comes. But, you know, everybody's just kind of going back to their squares and being back to um, – who they aim to be in this. Um, let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Like, subscribe. Y'all know all of that. Y'all know I talk back. Until the next time. Peace.